Hello everyone. Welcome to This Day in History, a special This Day in History. Um, we'll start off, we'll start off normal, right? Um, This Day in History, June 6, 1844, the Young Men's Christian Association, the YMCA, was founded in London. YMCA. Come on and sing it with me. Yeah, come on, sing it. I hope I wasn't the only one singing it. Also, this day in history, June 6, 1933, the first drive-in movie theater opened in Camden, Camden, New Jersey, changing the sex life for preteens everywhere. Come on. Come on. Be scoring to that movie. They ain't really watching the movie. Nah, they ain't watching the movie. They in the backseat. Also, this day in history, June 6, 2002, President Bush proposed a new cabinet the Department of Homeland Security, and um, <clears throat> oh, no, 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 no. oh, sorry, I gotta, gotta get that checked. I gotta get that checked. But uh, that's all the normal happenings from this day in history. But today is a special day, June 6, nineteen forty-four. Five thousand vessels and a hundred and six thousand men. Set sail from the south of England, from beaches like Weymouth, and set sail across the channel to Normandy and invaded, invaded Hitler's fortress. And uh, it was D-Day. And D-Day was a crucial, crucial, obviously, turning point in the war. It pretty much signified the beginning of the end the real end of Hitler's Hitler's campaign of hate and destruction and you know to me it's a an important day to remember I feel like as the years keep progressing people people continue to kind of forget about that time World War II and on the grand stage like Normandy beaches like D-Day when you got when you name the beaches you got Utah, Omaha Juno, Gold and Sword beaches thousands of men laid down their lives their lives so that we can enjoy the freedoms that that we have today and uh, I just think it's very very important the reason why I'm doing this channel the reason why I feel like I keep telling people history is so important is for moments like this for days like this we need to sit back and reflect um it's it's crazy to think a bunch of young men 18 to 20 years in age gathering together to take on such a tremendous tremendous burden a burden that none of them really had a choice in the matter they were put there and generals told them hey we're gonna take these beaches and the Germans had no intention of giving them beaches up they were waiting for them with machine guns and all kinds of types of bombs and mines and all kinds of obstacles that these men had to traverse just to take these beaches and um, you know um, there's less and less of these World War II veterans amongst us every day that goes by. And if you so happen to know one, whether it be your one of your grandparents or just anyone you know in your community, I think it's important that you take time to thank them. Thank them. Um, because it, this, it meant so much. It really did craft the world that we live in today. So for those of you that don't know, don't know basically, it took place, this didn't happen overnight. It was a whole operation. They called it Operation Overlord. And it was a huge, huge combined effort from the allies. Uh, you got American, Great Britain, um, other, other allied countries, lesser known, that also sent men to join this invasion. Canada, um, Poland, uh, um, France, the, the um, you know, there were lots of French, French, France was occupied at the time, but there were lots of um, uh, soldiers, men 
that managed to escape and join the effort. And, um, yeah, they combined their forces. And Hitler, in the meantime, Hitler, um, against the um, warnings of his best generals, like Erwin Rommel, Erwin Rommel, decided that the attack was going to happen further up north. And the deception was further perpetrated by the Allies because they had what they called... Um, uh, they had a, another deceptive operation going on where they literally fielded tanks and um, they had tanks and other uh, equipment that were inflatable. They were fake, but from the sky, German reconnaissance planes couldn't tell the difference. They thought they were real, so they thought the invasion was amassing somewhere else and that the uh, Allies were going to invade further up, not in Normandy, but further up. So most of the Germans... <laughs> Were diverted there and once again like i said hitler completely ignored the the warnings or the thoughts of his best generals who told him no but i don't think i think that's they're gonna attack on these beaches so here we go we get to the day june 6th 1944 thousands of men piled onto these these ships to these landing vessels and headed across the the english channel and it was rough sailing it was um the weather wasn't the best that day the, the seas the waves were crashing and so it was rough sailing not to mention probably the nerves the nerves that these men were feeling you know and uh it was ominous day on the other side of the beach the germans were just lackadaisical they didn't think anything was happening and their men were playing soccer on the beaches their stories about that and 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 Erwin Rommel, actually the commander who was left in charge, he actually went back to home to enjoy his. Uh, I believe it was the birthday of his wife. I might be wrong on that, but it was a birthday. It was an occasion, so he left because he didn't think the invasion was going to happen on that particular day. So he left, and so they were not ready. So. Uh, the day progressed, it progressed, and eventually, uh, on the horizon, ships appeared, and the Germans started to panic and scramble. They scrambled to their positions, and um, they had taken some precautionary measures. They had the beaches lined with these, as you see, if you see photographs, they're like, you see these things are like X's on the beach, and... Um, these things, they're giant, like, I think they're made of, don't quote me on this, I think they're made of steel or iron or something, but they're basically designed to stop ships from being able to land on the beachhead. So the ships couldn't get, they couldn't get the men to the beach. The men literally had to jump off of the boats into the water with with guns and packs of equipment and Sadly, a lot of a lot of men perished. They drowned. They were they were drowned by their own equipment, falling into the o to the ocean, trying to get onto the beachhead. Now, also, they had mines. Obviously, they mined the whole beaches. Um, and the Allies did have the advantage. They had their ships. Um, the ships were providing cover um, as best as they could. Um, uh, and so, yeah, they did their damnedest to take these beaches. And uh, a lot of the um, beaches, you, you think um, a lot of people don't really know about the other beaches. You had um, Utah Beach, you had Gold um, Beaches and Sword. Generally speaking, historians said those beaches were taken relatively quickly. Um, of course, there were casualties. Um, but... On the other hand, you had Juno Beach, which was mainly Canadian soldiers, and then the infamous Omaha Beach, which was mainly American soldiers. These two beaches were slaughterhouses, basically. It, Omaha in particular. Omaha Beach, they had more casualties on Omaha than the other beaches combined. And that just let that sink in. More casualties on one of the beaches and all the other ones combined. And so, these men, uh, the Germans had um, MG uh, 
34s, MG42 machine guns, uh, some of the most potent weaponry known to man. I mean, these machine guns were designed to kill. They were saws. They were constant hell of bullets, just, just tearing through whatever they hit. Um, and they had fortified positions that were high above on cliffs. So they had overlooking onto the beach down below uh, positions. And, and so, yeah, it was a massacre. But through tenacity, through sheer will to survive, these men managed to push through and eventually overtake every beachhead, including Omaha. Omaha, about 600 men made it across, made it across the beach to eventually weed out and take the bunkers that the Germans, um, that the Germans were occupying at the time. Um, from there, it, the rest was history. From there, they uh, secured that area and they pushed into France. They had to make it through treacherous hedgerow country, which I'm not going to get into that. Look it up. Hedgerows are brutal because they couldn't drive their tanks through and the Germans ambushed them at every co at every corner. But basically from there, they went to liberate all of France. Eventually they liberated Paris and eventually they invaded Germany and ended the war. Um, the Russians, in, by, in the meantime, I should say, I forgot, were pushing in from the east allies from the west and they sandwiched they sandwiched the Germans into basically if they had to they had to retreat and they had no more options they made one last one last uh, offensive move in the uh, Battle of the Bulge but it was to no avail and eventually Hitler in his uh, tyrannical t reign of terror came to an end so this day in history June 6th 1944 never forget the sacrifices that were made on this day on those beaches utah omaha juno and gold and sword this day in history